It is the golden hour here on this leap day down in Florida. Golden hour meaning the light is really good outside right now. It's almost sunset, so hopefully I look awesome to you guys. Anyway, I want to talk about something real quick. Um, something I've heard a few times, and I recently watched a video. Um, it was a great video about LMMS, but they mentioned Ardor. Ardor is uh, you know, a music track recording software, and it's great. I haven't used it in a couple of years, but I, I used it back in the day. I loved it. Um, but one of the misconceptions for, about it is that it's not free. And some people point out that it's free, libre free, but it's not free as in beer free because you have to pay for it, which is not true at all. Uh, Ardor is uh, under the GPL2 license, I believe. Uh, which means it is free and will always be free, uh, both for cost and in freedom for usage. Now, with GPL license, I can sell it, but you're not really selling software when you do that. You're selling, um, you're paying for me to provide it to you in many cases or other instances, but that's the normal thing. So if you go to the Ardor website and you go to download, it shows that it's got different subscriptions and you can pay a dollar a month or up on up for different things. You're not paying for the software. You can say you're paying for the software, but you're not paying. You're paying for them to provide it for, it to you, you, for, you to, for them to compile it for you, to give you automatic updates and stuff like that from their website. If you're on Linux, you already get a compiled version through your repositories because there is nothing saying that I can't compile it and share it with you. You can also get the, so, the source code free from the Ardor project at their website and download and compile it yourself for free. What they're charging for is compiling it for you and providing it for you so you get those updates they do nightly builds and you get access to that uh, which again you can pull the software nightly and compile it yourself uh, so it is free it's just they're charging a subscription to try to raise money for the developers which is fine but there's nothing to stop me from compiling and sharing it with you as most Linux distros do as it's in their repositories so uh, it's great software if you like software especially you know, if it's free and open source software, think about uh, supporting the developers. Uh, think about something like that that's replacing uh, uh, software that, the proprietary software that might be a couple hundred dollars. And think about taking, oh, hey, you know what? I, I could have spent two or three hundred dollars or even fifty dollars on a program like this. I'm going to give them five dollars this month or ten dollars this month. I do that. I try to put five or ten dollars a month. I pick a project and, and I try to support them financially, some open source project. If everyone did that, everyone, you know, all these uh, software developers would make a, you know, a decent chunk of change. Um, but it just bothered me that I hear that quite often, that it's not free software or it's, it's Libre uh, software, but it's not free as in beer software, which is the opposite of what you would normally hear. But and it's because their website comes across that. And I'm not going to say how I feel about that. I mean, it's one of those, it's, it's one of those weird things that, you know, they have every right to, uh, I think. I personally think developers should get paid. I think software should always be free. You should never ever pay for software, but paying somebody to develop software or paying someone to provide that software for you or do some sort of work for you, um, I think is a great thing. It's, it's a fine line and a lot of people don't understand the difference, but there's a huge difference in that when it comes to freedom of software, it's your freedom of use as well as the cost, but there, is, there are people working on it and you should support them. Not everyone does, and you can't support every project, every little bit of software on my on my desktop. You know how many uh, software projects there are. I personally try to look for the smaller ones too. Like I I, I don't usually I'm not gonna I don't think I've ever donated any money to Blender because they they, they make a decent ch chunk of change or or LibreOffice that because people support them all the time. I try to look for those little projects uh, and, that I like and support them. So think about doing the same. I've actually thought about doing on my channel where I let you guys know this month I'm supporting so-and-so and like maybe a lot of my followers can go and support that same person that month so that that developer might get a, a big chunk of change that month and then the next month I find another developer and I say, hey, I'm going to support this guy. I, I don't know. I, I don't know if uh, my subscribers would actually go for something like that. Let me know in the comments below if you want to hear who I subscribe or who I um, support so that maybe you could support a few dollars. I mean... I have lots of uh, viewers, um, but very few of them support me. So the odds that they're going to go support somebody I'm suggesting uh, might not. But maybe you're more interested in supporting software developers than someone who talks to a camera. Who knows? Um, but uh, let me know in the comments below. Uh, would you be interested in hearing who I'm donating to each month? Who I'm, I hate using the word donate. Who I'm supporting each month. 
uh, and that you would be interested in maybe supporting the same people. Let's discuss that. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope that you have a great day.